What's going on besties? Today we are tackling the T7 mathematics portion of the exam and we're going to be talking about standard and metric conversions. Let's get started. Throughout the world, various units of measurements are used across many different countries. However, the most widely adopted system globally is known as the metric system. In fact, there's only three countries around the world that don't use the metric system. And guess what? The United States is one of them. Starting with the standard system, also known as the United States customary system, includes units such as length. You're gonna see inches, feet, yards, and miles. We've got weight, where we use ounces and pounds. And we have capacity, where we use teaspoon, tablespoon, cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. In comparison, we have the metric system, also known as the International System of Unit, SI. The system is actually decimal based, meaning that it's based on powers of 10, which simplifies calculations and conversions between units. In the metric system, you're going to see length in which they use the unit of meters. Then we have weight, which is the unit of grams, and we have capacity, which uses the unit of liters. Overall, the metric system is much simpler than the standard system. Understanding both systems, though, is gonna be beneficial when you're taking your T's, especially in the field of science, as you're gonna be using these conversions quite a bit when you enter healthcare. We're gonna begin by converting customary units of length, specifically working on feet, inches, yards, and miles. So we have about eight conversions in front of us that we're gonna to tackle together, aiming to solidify our understanding of these measurements. So let's get started on our first example. You're gonna notice up here at the top of your screen, I gave you like a little cheat sheet of the breakdown of the most commonly seen units of measure conversions when it comes to the standard system that the T's is going to test you on. So the first one, as we know, one foot is equal to 12 inches. One yard is equal to three feet or 36 inches. And one mile is equal to 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet or 63,360 inches. So let's break down our examples to see what that'll look like on your test. So for this first problem, we need to consider that one foot is equal to 12 inches like we have up here at the top of our screen. So when you think about the length of a ruler, right? A ruler is 12 inches, it's about one foot. When we have two feet, it's logic that we would follow by just multiplying that two feet by 12 inches. So two feet times 12 inches is going to give us 24. So the correct answer to this question is 24 inches. So this is a really important concept for you to know. Whenever we're converting from a larger unit like feet to a smaller unit like inches, the operation that we're gonna use is multiplication. And if we're going the other way around where we have a smaller unit going to a bigger unit, we're going to use division. You have to remember this is gonna be crucial when you're taking your ATITs and you're navigating between units because even in the metric system, you're gonna use these same principles. So our next sample is 48 inches to blank feet. So we're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit. So we are going to use division. So we know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So we're just going to divide our 48 inches by 12. So 48 divided by 12 gives us four feet, which is the correct answer to problem two. Our next example is three yards to how many feet? So again, we're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, so we're going to multiply. We know that one yard is equal to three feet, so we are gonna multiply by three, and that is going to give us our correct answer of three yards is equal to nine feet. So how many inches are in two miles? So as we can see up here, we know that one mile is equal to 63,360 inches. So one mile is equal to 63,360 inches. So we know that we have two miles in our example, so we're just going to multiply that two by our 63,360, and that is going to give us 1,260 720 inches. So how many feet are in 26.2 miles? So you might recognize this because this is actually what we run when we run a marathon, right? So how many feet are we actually running? So as we know, one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So what we're gonna do is we're going from a larger number to a smaller number, so we're gonna multiply. So we're gonna multiply that 26.2 miles by our 5,280 feet, and that is going to give us a total of 138,336. 
And lastly, we're going from feet to yards. So we have 900 feet is equal to how many yards? So we know that one yard is equal to three feet. So now we just need to do our conversion. Remember, we're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, right? So we're going to divide. So we're gonna divide our 900 feet by three, and that is going to give us our answer of 900 feet is equal to 300 yards. So next up, we're gonna tackle weight when it comes to the standard system. So the number one thing that the T's always loves to test you on is pounds to ounces. So as we know, one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So this is gonna be the key one for you to remember when you're taking that math portion. So our first example says three pounds is equal to how many ounces? So as we know, one pound is equal to 16. We're going from a larger number to a smaller number, which means we're gonna multiply. So so we're going to multiply three pounds by our 16 and that is going to give us our answer of 48 ounces. Our next example says we have a five pound bag of flour and we need to convert that into ounces. So again, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did in example one and we're going to multiply our five by 16. Five times 16 is equal to 80, and that gives us our correct answer of 80 ounces. So for our last two problems, we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So when we go from small to large, we actually divide. So in this case, we're gonna divide each one by 16 in order to get our answer from ounces to pounds. So our first one is 64 ounces is equal to how many pounds? Well, 64 divided by 16 is equal to four. And our last one, 96 ounces is how many pounds? Again, 96 divided by 16 gives us six. So for each answer, we know 64 ounces is equal to four pounds and 96 ounces is equal to six pounds. Let's explore a mnemonic to recall the U.S. customary units used for measuring liquid volume or capacity. I like to refer to this as big G or super G. To start with, we're going to draw a large capital letter G. This is going to symbolize our gallon. This G serves as the foundation for understanding the hierarchy of liquid volume measured when we use U.S. customary systems. Next up, we're going to add four Q's inside of our big G, symbolizing that gallons equals four quarts. For each quart represented by Q, we're going to introduce two P's, indicating that each quart is going to consist of two pints. And lastly, each pint is comprised of two cups. So we're just going to put our little C's inside of our big P's to represent that we know that there's two cups in each pint. This means that one gallon is equal to four quarts, is equal to eight pints, and is equal to 16 cups. That is the easiest way that you're gonna remember how to break down liquid volume when you're taking the teas. Another important concept that doesn't quite fit inside of this is tablespoons to teaspoons. So this one you're just gonna have to memorize a little bit, but as we know, one tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons. So let's do some practice questions to figure out how we're gonna solve these capacity problems. All right, let's start our conversions. So as we know, our first question says three gallons to how many quarts? So we know that one gallon is equal to four quarts. So we're going from a larger number to a smaller number, we're gonna multiply. So we're gonna multiply our three gallons by four, and that is going to give us our correct answer of 12 quarts. Our next question says eight cups is equal to how many pints? So as we know, between cups and pints, we have for every eight pints, we have 16 cups. So that's basically, just to make it a little bit easier, is two cups per one pint. So what are we gonna do whenever we're going from a smaller number to a larger number? We're gonna divide, right? So we're gonna divide our eight cups by two, and that is going to give us our correct answer of four pints. So how many teaspoons are in four tablespoons? So as we know, one tablespoon is equal to three teaspoons. So again, we're going from a larger number to a smaller number, we are going to multiply. So we are gonna multiply our four tablespoons by three, and that is going to give us our correct answer of four tablespoons is equal to 12 teaspoons. And then lastly, we have five pints is equal to how many cups? So as we talked about before in example two, we know that one pint is equal to two cups. So what are we gonna do when we go from a larger number 
to a smaller number, we're gonna multiply. So we are gonna multiply our five pints by two, and that is gonna give us our correct answer of 10 cups. So I put a little cheat sheet up here on your screen because these are the most common conversions that you're gonna see when it comes to the standard measurements of length, weight, and capacity. So just become very accustomed to these. Sometimes the T's is actually gonna give you the formula, sometimes they won't. So it's good for you to have a general understanding of how to calculate between them in case you encounter these questions on the T's. Let's talk about my favorite system, the metric system. Metric conversions are gonna be key for you to understand when it comes not only to the ATITs, but also healthcare in general. And the mnemonic that I want you to use to remember this is, King Henry doesn't usually drink cold milk. By using this phrase, it's going to help you remember the order of metric prefixes when it comes to kilo all the way to milli, relative to the unit base, which could be grams, meters, and liters. So at the heart of our mnemonic, we symbolize the word usually with units. This is where your general units are going to lie, whether you are doing grams, liters, or meters. And around this core are prefixes that indicate whether we're dealing with units that are larger or smaller than our base unit. So as we move to the right towards cold milk, we're gonna encounter smaller units, deci, centi, milli, each representing a factor of 10 smaller than our base. Conversely, as we move leftward from our units, we're going to encounter the higher numbers, our King Henry's, right? Our deca, hecto, and our kilo, each representing a tenfold increase over our base unit. So a kilo therefore signifies a quantity of a thousand times larger than our base units. So this framework is going to categorize and quantify the relationships between different metric units. Just like we did in our decimal placeholders video, by the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go back and watch that to understand what we're about to do right now. We're going to move the decimal either left or right, depending on the value that we are converting from. So here's a couple of examples to help us with this concept. So we start with our first example, which is 2,500 milliliters to kilometers. So how do we do this? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move our decimal place. So it's kind of not really giving here, but we can just assume that the decimal place is right after our whole number, which is 2,500. So what do we do? We know we're going from millimeters to kilometers, right? So we're gonna move our decimal place one, two, three, four, five, six, six times to the left. So that's ultimately going to give us the correct answer of 0 0.0025. Because if we did this, just so that everybody can see, here's our decimal. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six. Decimal goes here. We add our zeros where we didn't have them before, and that gives us our correct answer. Our next question, we're going from liters to kiloliters. So again, here's our base unit where we find liters, and we're gonna move our decimal place one, two, three times to the left. So I'm gonna write my number out here at the bottom. Our decimal place is right here. We're gonna go one, two, three times to the left. So as we know, 750,000 liters is equal to 750 kiloliters. So in our next question, we're going in the opposite direction. So we're going from kilometers to centimeters. So we are moving from here all the way down here. So we're gonna move our decimal to the right, one, two, three, four, five times. So writing out our number, 42.195, we're gonna move it to the right, one, two, three, four, five times. And that is going to give us our correct answer of 4,219,500 centimeters. Now for our last example, we're going back the other way. So we're going from milligrams to kilograms. So we're gonna move our decimal, one, two, three, four, five, six. So writing out our number, 250 milligrams, we're going to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna add our zeros that we didn't have before, and that is going to give us our correct answer of 0 0.00025 kilograms. So metric conversions really are quite simple when you think about it. It's just moving the decimal place either left to right. But now we've got to figure out how are we going to convert between the two systems? That is one of the most commonly missed types of questions that we see on the T's is 
taking measurements from the standard system and converting them to the metric system. So over here on the right side of your screen, again, I gave you a little cheat sheet of the most common ones that you're going to see on the ATITs. These are the good ones to remember in order to pass these types of questions. So our first question is 50 pounds is equal to how many kilograms? So this is going to be huge when it comes to healthcare because we are constantly converting between pounds and kilograms. So make sure you commit this one to memory. So one kilogram is actually equal to 2.2 pounds. So we're going from pounds to kilograms, we're gonna divide by 2.2, and that is going to give us our correct answer of 22.73 kilograms. Next up, we're moving from inches to centimeters. So as we know, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So again, we want to multiply this time, right? We're going from inches to centimeters. So 20 times 2.54 is going to give us our correct answer of 50.8 centimeters. Our next conversion is five miles to kilometers. So one mile is actually equal to 1.6 kilometers. So we're going from miles to kilometers. So we're going to multiply and we're gonna multiply by 1.6, which is going to give us our correct answer of five miles is equal to eight kilometers. So how many meters is in 30 feet? So one meter, is equal to 3.28 feet. So again, we're going from feet to meters, so we're going to divide. We're going to divide by a 3.28, and that is going to give us our correct answer of 9.15 meters. And our last question is, 100 grams is equal to how many ounces? So one ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. So again, we're going from grams to ounces, we're going to divide. We're going to divide by 28.35, and that is going to give us our correct answer of 3.53 ounces. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding how we convert standard conversions, metric conversions, and then of course, how we convert between them. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources to help you ace those ATITs exams. And as always, I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye.